accept the recording of a will unless it is proved by probate, unless an order is issued by a probate court. So that's, that's the extent of the corporate malfeasance yeah. over the public record, yeah? Yes, believe me, I'm uh, exploring right now. I know a representative, I know some people in this area, and I'm wondering, you know, my gosh, when did the right to record on the public side and not the corporate side just disappear in our state, and why? Because I've recommended that people do a certificate of live birth, never get a birth certificate, just get a certificate of live birth, you know, and get it notarized and put it in the courthouse so that you have is a public record that your child was born in the state. And that's not even a list of documents that can be filed. It's well, like, in other exactly. words, they will reject those out of hand, and they have that right in this state, in Idaho, to reject um, anything uh, with a, the county recorder and the prosecuting attorney. But you already know that, Frank, because yep. I know you've been talking. We've been talking about this, but I'm going to sign off. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate all your help. That's all right. But before you go, do you, have you heard what we said, that the general executor and guardian mm -hmm. appoints an agent by warrant? Yes. And that becomes an authorized representative. So when, when you do that, you appoint to go to, to court because that court is a probate court, then that mm -hmm. individual goes to court with a warrant and has standing because they've been appointed by warrant. Mm -hmm. And because it's a probate court, they can then say to the judge, you are not recognized and show us your warrant. And if that judge has no warrant, then it's, it's pretty much game over. So it cha totally changes the dynamic of this, uh, this corporate kind of close, close, close. You've got to be an attorney. You've got to be a member. You've got to be a member. We're at a point now where, hey, um, show us your warrant and if you don't show us your warrant then then uh, you have no authority absolutely have no authority if this is a matter of probate if it's a matter of something else if it's a matter of other law then we'll talk about it but if it's probate show us your warrant if they don't have a warrant then they are an executor to some tort yeah okay but this is a case it wouldn't be probate court you know i was talking about the vaccination liberation request uh it's not probate court it's with a, a case for, with West Virginia. That's not probate court. It's trying. No, no, no. Every court. No, but every court. What you would find is, if it is a matter of, is it a matter of uh, equity? What is it a matter of? Uh, oh, gosh, I'm. I'm is it probably property? not as well versed as I need to be. Um, no, no, no. But if it's a matter of property, then, then. It's, it's a matter of violation to... of your children's uh, bodies by forced vaccination in order to get an education or okay. an indoctrination, well, all... rather. <laughs> it's not education anymore to put them into a system of indoctrination by the corporation, but people still choose to do that. But well, what okay. would you call even, that? Even, I mean, it's a law that says that you court. have to inject your children with poisons in order to have them attend uh, school that, you know, your tax dollars are funding, and they're trying to overturn uh, it, that. Yeah, it's insane. But but children handled uh, under guardianship powers is the flip side of probate. Okay. So it, even a family court is a probate court. Okay. So it is a probate matter. It's a probate matter, huh? Okay. Yeah, I've got to wrap my I mean, mind around this. It's really... Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's pretty twisted, but... But from what, I, from what I have seen, and I, I didn't believe it, i got to say, I mean, I, I knew about probate. We'd worked through all the different levels of law. But it, it, it appears that pretty much everything that we're talking about when we talk about trusts, so everything in their court's a trust, everything in their court is a state, everything in their court is about probate. That's so right. pretty much under this system, um, because everyone is considered under intestate, everyone's considered a ward, the whole thing's run where we have no standing. So it's a, it's a guaranteed win system, and, and that's what they've devolved to. Okay. So I just want to let you know that, that there are other ways to get someone into a court now, if it's a probate court, where they issued under warrant um, the authority having been appointed by a general executor and guardian, providing it's on the public record that the general executor and guardian is, is recognised, then um, they go with a legitimate warrant 
they go to court, they're there. Game over. I'm here representing the general executor and, and, uh, and guardian. Here's my warrant. What's your authority? You're not recognised as the judge. You haven't been appointed as an agent. So I'm here uh, as a matter of public record. I'm here to appoint uh, a court of public record. Who are you? You're the executive to taught. So I just want to make that point because... Yeah, that is bad... really important. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's really important because as bad as it is, I want us to make sure that we are acting... Well, we're not acting. We are, we are, we are behaving as one should behave as a, as a general executor and guardian. Well, okay. thanks very much for the points. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, thanks. And it's, look, it's, it's a big issue. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm interrupting people calling. I'll be a bit more patient. So um, let me uh, go through and let's see. Uh, Galactic Sotrona, yes, you go star rate or hash rate if you want to uh, come into the call. Uh, Jazzy 7, affirmation, never affidavit. Uh, always affirmation, never, ever affidavit. Affidavit implies uh, an acquiescence. Uh, it requires the taking on of guilt. It is the uh, positioning of you um, under. So I haven't done enough treatment on what are the tricks of why they want us to do affidavit. But affidavit apparently involves, not only does it involve the admission uh, of uh, some guilt, but it also is the abdication of any claim of authority. If you sign affidavits, then effectively you are abdicating responsibility. And do you want to abdicate from the position of general executor and guardian? No, you don't. Well, we've got a couple of callers who want to speak, so let's get on to it. The first one is Lynn. Let me get on to Lynn. Lynn, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. I just wanted to add something with what Dawn said. Um, I know one of the parties whose sale was stopped yesterday and you're talking about warrants and you know where is your authority now the attorney that's claimed to be the attorney for the foreclosing bank has contacted these people and said i want to send you some documents to sign i'm no longer the agent um and of course the people said you started the issue you're the agent we're not signing anything then the foreclosure sale company came on and said, well, we're not an agent. We just do foreclosure sales. And, and the man said, you most definitely are an agent. If you're standing up and saying uh, this is on behalf of bank so-and-so, we're conducting the sale uh, for the foreclosure of this property. So there were two parties that wanted to wiggle out of being the agent, even though they stepped into the agency uh, right off the bat without any known designation or, or without proof of any designation. I don't believe, you know, I don't know whether proof was asked for or not, but the point is they were saying, they were calling uncle, oh, you know, I think I want out of here. It's getting uncomfortable. Mm. Well, it shows the, it shows the importance of understanding the role of agent and agency. I don't think we've done enough on this yet. We've had um, chats uh, the last few weeks about the role of agent and the fact that the, particularly if a, a, a judge is sitting there with a plaque, I mean, I've got to tell you, nameplates uh, are a 18th and 19th century component of commercial transactions. In fact, some of the, the commercial law that was produced required a nameplate, in fact, a brass nameplate to be present in order to conduct business so that judge is there as an independent contractor waiting to be appointed by presumption as the agent on all the parties. So it's a pretty powerful area, this role of agent, either to, to show that they weren't duly appointed or to keep them in that slot if they're doing the wrong job. So very, very interesting, Lynn. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. Okay. Talk to you soon, Lynn. Thank you. Bye. Uh, we've got a couple more query questions here and then we'll go to the next caller. Look, thank you so much for people coming on. I really appreciate hearing from you live and I know that people 
you were listening to the call of Presac to hear that. Um, so we answered the question on affidavit and aff uh, affirmation. Um, I haven't got any more questions in the chat here yet. Uh, I see the discussion. Let's go to the next caller because we've got a caller waiting. This is guest 10. Hello, guest 10. Can you hear us? Yes. Hello, Frank. This is Roberto from Toronto, Canada. Hi, Roberto. How are you? Good. I'm great. Um, I just want a couple things. First um, is to comment on what you just uh, spoke of, the affidavit versus the affirmation. Yes. I understand all that, but I also remember what you said about not changing their form. Now, yes. Would, would, would um, labeling a document, um, a pronouncement or affirmation be altering that form? And would they accept it when you label it? label it as such instead of an affidavit? Um, no, no, because the reason we use the word affirmation, I mean, for example, uh, in a number of private documents in Nicadia, we use the word pronouncement. Have you heard us use that before? Yes. Okay. The reason we use the word affirmation is that you will find the word affirmation is within the statutes, both in terms of corporate codes and in terms of the original acts of the estate. The word is present, and the reason the word is present is that uh, when they are uh, promulgating, there's another word, promulgating their, their various acts or, or uh, issuing, they do it by affirmation, not by affidavit. So they can't get rid of it, they just don't promote it. So it is one of their forms that they permit. Yes, it is. Oh, okay, great. Um, the second part, I just wanted to give um, a little bit of good news, um, if I might share with... Um, yeah, please, people. please. Um, I have a close friend who's um, a constitutional lawyer here in Canada, and yeah. uh, he's, he's kind of, he's an honorable man and always fights for, you know, the everyone's rights, and it doesn't matter who it is. He was actually also in a big high-profile case that was also on the news where he was um, representing an alleged terrorist who they just shipped off to Guantanamo years ago and had his life threatened and all of that from the people within the society, not from people on the street. So a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, he launched a case against 10 judges um, in, here in Canada. And um, I'm pleased to announce that a huge decision was delivered yesterday by the Federal Court of Appeals and as a result, about 10 deputy judges in violation of the law must, must leave their posts, in addition to a couple of federal tax court judges who resigned voluntarily a couple of years ago when he first initiated the court challenge. So this wow. is an inspiration that, you know, when you do keep at it and you have the law on your side, that no one is above um, the law and corruption, and I mean, it, it, he's taken on so many of these cases and, and continued to kind of fight even against all odds and, and life threatened, and he was poisoned once in a restaurant. Um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the works, and I'm sure many in this um, plight have, I mean, I mean, threatening his children and, and, and dead animals showing up on his lawn, um, and he still persevered. And I don't yes. think it was in relation to this case. I'm talking about previous cases. But yesterday when they, they came down with the decision after two and a half years, long battle. And I mean, and he's one of them in the bar. You know, he's, a, he's mm -hmm. an attorney. But also to remind everyone that there are good people. Just because they're lawyers doesn't mean that they're all should be lumped into a judgment. And... Um, and, and this is great. And this came from them not respecting their own laws. I mean, it was mandatory that you had to you had to retire by the time you're 75. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think it's, if I if I if I just do a quick wrap up because I think it's a great thing to share, and I know that people would find this fascinating. Um, can you just give the name of the case? Do you know what the case name is just for the benefit of everyone on the call? Uh, let me see if I know the case name. Uh, the, the judge's name, I mean, the lawyer's name is uh, Rocco Galati. It's actually got, um, 
I mean, he he shows up if you go on on 